Hi, welcome to this demo of Spectrum Protect version 8.1.10 and our new ability to copy retention sets to tape. So back in version 8.1.7, we introduced retention sets and in 8.1.9, we introduced the ability to create retention holds. Being able to copy retention sets to tape is going to provide a secure long-term retention storage pool on cost-efficient tape with the advantage of air gap that tape provides. This is going to work with any of the primary storage pool backup data that we create retention sets with. That includes your file system backups from your Spectrum Protect clients, as well as your Spectrum Protect for virtual machine backups. And when we write the data out to tape, we are going to rehydrate it, uncompress it, and unencrypt it so that if you have to restore from the tape, it will be faster. Now, of course, you can still use the tape encryption or the tape compression that the tape libraries and drives provide. We also are going to create a dedicated, separate, long-term retention data storage pool so that your operational backup data and archive data is not going to be mixed in with the tapes that hold your retention sets on them. I'm going to demo two scenarios on how to create a retention storage pool, which will automatically generate a retention storage rule that can be used in the first scenario with a new retention rule, and in the second scenario with an existing retention rule. So the retention rule will create a in-place retention set. And then the storage retention rule will run and copy the retention sets to tape in the retention storage pool. And I've got two other videos which will cover managing moving the retention tapes and the custom reports. So with that, let's go ahead and get going. From the Operations Center, first go into Services and then into Retention Rules. I'll first show you how to create a brand new retention rule and retention storage pool. So click on create rule. Now this part of the screen is going to be identical to what you did in previous versions to create a retention rule. You're going to give the retention rule a name. You can choose if you want that retention rule to be active, which specifies whether the rule is going to run automatically according to the set frequency. So we'll leave that active. You'll choose a server, you can enter a description, and then you're going to choose a frequency. And from the frequency drop down, if you have previously created frequencies, those will show up. Otherwise, you can create a new one, and you'll choose the specific dates that you want to run that creation of the retention set on. We're going to have it created weekly on Thursday. So if you check, you'll see the label now says on Thursday. Go ahead and click Create. Next, you'll choose a start time for when the retention set should be created. So you want to take into consideration what time your backups usually complete at. So we're going to go ahead and choose 9.15 a.m. And now you'll choose a retention period. And this is how long you want the retention set to be retained for. So if you only fill out these items on the left-hand side, that is going to create an in-place copy of the retention set only, meaning it'll leave those backed up objects in the primary pool they currently reside in until the retention set expires off. If you want that instead to be copied out to tape, you will now fill in the items on the right hand side. First, you need to select a retention storage pool, either use an existing one or create a new one. If you create a new one, it will also create a corresponding retention storage rule. Click Create Retention Pool. Give the retention pool a name. We'll call it Rep Pool 2. You can give it a description. Now you can choose if you want co-location on, and this is your normal co-location where we will write either individual file spaces, nodes, or group of nodes to a specific tape or set of tapes. If you choose co-location, we will break up the retention sets and put the individual items on their own set or set of tapes. So if you have multiple nodes in there and each node is being co-located, each node will have their portion of the retention set on their own tape. 
That's of course assuming there's enough tapes available to fulfill the collocation. Also, collocation in general usually uses more tapes. For the new retention storage rule, you need to set the daily start time that you want Spectre Protect to go out and check if there are any retention sets residing in primary storage pools that need to be copied to tape. Remember, the retention rule initially creates an in-place retention set, and those sets are left in the storage pools that they reside in, regardless if that's container, cloud, disk, or tape primary storage pools. We will copy them to tape for offline protection when this retention storage rule copy kicks off. So after the copy process creates the retention set on tape, the original backup objects are kept in their original primary storage according to the backup policies only. And then the retention set data on tape is going to be retained until that retention set's expiration date. So on a daily basis, this retention storage rule will check to see if there's any retention sets we need to copy to tape, and we'll run that process for as long as you allow. According to the max runtime parameter, if the copy to tape does not complete, on the next day, we'll pick up and start where we left off. So we'll set the daily start time for after our retention sets would have been created, and we'll leave our max runtime to no limit. We'll go ahead and click Next. Now we need to choose the device class that we want to use for the tape retention storage pool. And this can be a LTO device, 3592, STK. It can also be a VTL. However, no file device classes are supported. We'll go ahead and choose an existing device class and click Create Storage Pool. Now you need to choose if you want to do volume stacking. And this specifies whether the retention set can share a tape volume with other retention sets. And it's designed to make efficient use of tape capacity by reducing the amount of unused space on a tape volume. And so even if the retention set is not large enough to fill a tape volume, the remaining space can be used for other retention sets. As long as the tapes are still in the library. If you plan on checking the tapes out of the library after the creation of each retention set, then stacking won't buy you much. Don't forget that if you turned on co-location, that will further limit which volumes can be used by which nodes, file spaces, or groups of nodes. Next, you need to choose the tape drive limit. And this is going to specify a limit on the number of tape drives that are used to copy the retention set to tape. And the more tape drives that are available, then the more parallel processes can be created to copy that retention set to tape. And this increased parallelism can improve the performance of the copy operation, but it also requires more tape drives and volumes. So you can choose to use the calculate best limit option and the server will then automatically determine a tape drive limit before it copies the retention set to tape. Check out the documentation for information on the other options. Now one thing to note is that we do try to group together a specific node or file space's data when we're writing it out to tape. So if you are using parallel processes for writing, we will group those entities' data together on the individual tapes. So once you've decided on the tape drive limit, you're now going to add in clients to this retention rule. To add clients, click on the plus sign. You then choose whether to add individual clients or VM name patterns. We'll first add in some individual clients. You can select multiple from the list, and then we can click the plus sign again, and this time we'll add in a VM name pattern based client set. So we'll go out here and select a VM owner, and then we'll put in a VM name pattern and choose from the resulting clients below, and then click on Add VMs. Okay, we'll go ahead now and click Create. Once that creation is finished, go ahead and click Close. And now out here on the Retention Rule page, you'll see our new Weekly to Tape Retention Rule. This retention rule has already run, and if we go into Services, Retention Sets, we can see the resulting in-place retention set. It has the same name as the retention rule, 
Notice it's currently sleeping. So we know that the retention set has been created in place in the location where that data was backed up to. Sleeping denotes that we are waiting for the retention pool's storage retention rule schedule to kick off a copy data to tape. If you wanna force it to kick off, you go into storage, storage rules, and now click run now. This will force the running of the storage retention rule that was automatically created when we defined the ret pool to storage retention pool. If we go back into services retention sets, you now will see that the status is copying. The progress bar is moving on the copy to tape process. When we're copying data from the original primary storage pool location of the retention set data and out to tape, we are rehydrating it, uncompressing it, unencrypting it on the fly, and then writing it out to tape. This is the same type of procedure we do if we were doing a restore of that file. So it doesn't matter where the data is coming from, if it's coming from another disk, if it's coming from a container storage pool, if it's coming from the cloud, we're simply copying it over to the new retention tape. The original backup data is left in its primary storage pool until it expires under its normal backup policy, whereas the data on the tape will not expire until the retention set policy is reached. If you do a restore, if the backup copy is still in the primary storage pool, we'll restore from that copy. Otherwise, we will restore from the tape copy. Now, Retention tapes have to be brought back on site to be reclaimed because the original backup files might have expired off the primary storage pools. Our copy to tape for this weekly to tape retention set has completed. Each retention set has a set ID. In our case, that set ID is 881. And this ID is going to be important if we want to track any of the informational messages that will be put into the activity log and saved for the lifetime of that retention set. If you select the retention set and then click on details, this will drill down into details on this specific retention set. And then if you go to activity log, it will show you the messages related specifically to this retention set. And once again, the retention set was number 881, and that's also going to be the job number. And you'll see that job number listed next to each of these messages in the activity log. If you want to see which volumes this retention set is being written to, you can click on the left-hand side on volumes. You will see that we have one volume that is currently filling. It is read-write, and it's in the mountable state. I want to show you a retention pool that has multiple dates of activity on it. So if we go into storage, storage rules, and go into the retention pool, this ret pool has been running for the last few weeks. And you'll notice on the graph here that it will show us the last 14 run results. These are not necessarily every day. So this might actually be intervals of multiple weeks or even months between each run. On 428, we had a incomplete copy to tape. And if we want more information on that, we can go to the recent history and then scroll up until we find the 428. And then you can actually click directly on that and it'll take you to the retention set. And you could figure out which volumes were associated with that retention set, as well as the activity log details. Now I'm going to do scenario two, where I add to an existing retention rule that's currently only doing retention sets in place, a storage retention rule that will copy the retention sets out to tape. So first you'll need to create a storage pool. So you'll go into storage, storage pools, and then click on the add storage pool button. You'll wanna choose the retention pool. Click next. These screens will now look like scenario one that we did earlier in this demo. So enter the name for the retention storage pool. You'll need to choose a Spectrum Protect server. You can optionally enter a description. You'll need to choose if you want to set co-location. You'll want to enter the daily start time for this storage rule. Now the storage rule that it's creating is going to have the same name as the storage pool. And then you're going to choose a max runtime for that storage rule. Next, you'll enter a device class. 
and then you'll click add storage pool. Okay, go ahead and click on close and view rules. Okay, so out here in the retention rule, we can look for an existing retention rule that we had been using in previous versions. Select that rule and click on details. We are now going to modify that rule and add to it the ability to copy it to tape. So click modify. On the right hand side, choose the retention storage pool that we just created and then choose volume stacking and your tape drive limit. Now that we've updated the retention rule, the retention storage rule, it will run on a daily basis at the chosen time and it will go out and look for candidate retention sets from this retention rule to copy to tape. Only retention sets that are created after this rule is updated will be candidate to be copied out to tape. One final new feature from the dashboard page, which you can get to by clicking on overviews and then overview, we now have a retention set portion. And this lets you know how many retention sets are expiring, how many have been interrupted, how many are in the process of copying to tape, and how many are sleeping and waiting to be copied to tape. In fact, you can click directly on these and it'll take you to those specific retention sets. So if we click on expiring, that will show us the three retention sets that are about to expire. So in summary, I've shown you how to set up the new option to copy retention sets to tape. I showed you both how to go in and create a new retention storage pool and retention storage rule, and then have that go to tape. I also showed you how to update an existing retention rule so that it now also copies its retention sets out to tape. Be sure to check out the other two videos on how to manage these retention tapes and move them between the library and offsite locations, and also how to create custom reports showing the retention information. Thank you.